karibu sana. Welcome back. I'm still Brian Sako at Brian Sako 101 and the hashtag to interact with us on is why in the morning at y for channel underscore on the gram and on X as well, including threads, okay, at y for channel. And now this conversation is interesting. I really can't wait for us to get deep into it and you're being joined live by Nangami Masaha. She's a public speaker and a corporate trainer. We're going to talk about self-mastery and that world of communication as well. You know, have you ever imagined yourself going to a, a big interview? You're not ready for it. For example, you're, ju you're just having your time in Kangemi and somebody tells you you're going to meet the CEO of Safaricom and you have to impress him so that you sign that deal. What are some of the tools of communication that you need? And also when it comes to your personality and presenting yourself in the presence of Safaricom CEO, now that I've said it anyways, there's a way that you must present to yourself to this guy so that you sign that deal. And also your general facets as a human being. And you know, human beings have different facets. And the complexities of life contribute to actually who you are. And I remember somebody telling me that, you know, you're a product of who and where you come from, but your environment just structures the experiences of what you become. And that's what we're going to delve into and much more. Once again, Karibu Sana and Nangami Masaka. I'm so elated and excited to have you. So uh, let's get into it right up. Uh, when, you, when you talk about uh, self-mastery, which is our topic of today, and uh, just the general facets of a human being, there are so many things that happen to people. And like I mentioned, you're a product of who and where you come from. This, I'm quoting this from Oprah Winfrey and uh, her best friend, Cody Yandler. She said, you're a product of who and where you come from, but the experiences of life just structures and shapes who you become, mm -hmm. meaning sometimes you're likely to carry things from your mother, your dad, your sister, and where you come from because you're used to that. So it shaped you and made you who you are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you are close to not experiencing other things because this is what you're used to, the ordinary. Yes. So how do you break the barrier and now become fluid? All right, um, I think then that's where the concept of self-mastery begins. So in a nutshell, self-mastery is just control of the self. Yeah. Where you get to a point where you can control the self. Now, we cannot control where we came from, but we can control where we're going. Right. And uh, once you get to a point of self-awareness, then that means you have to begin to work on yourself. And like we mentioned just um, before we got on set, we're talking about a human being has four aspects to them. Yeah. Of course, there are so many aspects, but the ones are the mental aspects, the spiritual aspects, emotional and um, physical aspect, where you have to take care of yourself, your body, and the rest of it. So yeah. let me just let me just give the background of self-mastery and what it encompasses, what it, what it entails, and perhaps then we can go to the rest of it. So I'll begin with um, spiritual uh, um, aspects. So the problem with most of us is that once we hit rock bottom or yeah. something traumatizing or something traumatic has happened, that is when we, we decide to go on a journey of self-development, personal improvement. And usually this happens, you know, when someone goes through a breakup, especially for women, that is when now we begin to hit the gym, we begin to read and we're making new friends, taking care of our minds and our spirits and we meditate. Yeah. That is self-mastery, that is personal development and self-improvement, which right. is something that is supposed to be a daily thing, it's supposed to be a lifestyle. So right. for me, once you get to a point where you hit rock bottom, I mean, you want to find yourself, you want to be a proper human being, you want to be decent, you want to be, you know, um, straightforward. You have to start with the spiritual aspect. Yeah. And of course, I have to put it out there, I'm a believer. Yeah. So when you take care of the... <laughs> yes. And there's um, a difference between <laughs> Christian religion <laughs> and even church. Y yeah, but we'll yeah. get to that yeah, later. Yeah, we'll get to that. So <laughs> for me, I'm spiritual. I believe in, yeah. um, in, in, in the life and the death of um, Jesus Christ, who happens to be my Lord and Savior. Yes. So um, for those of us who are spiritual, of course, for me, I have to start on a spiritual journey. because, And that is why yeah. most of the time when your life is chaotic, they say, you know, go sit somewhere, 30 minutes, one hour, meditate. It's about, yeah. you know, um, taking away the chaos just sticking away from the chaos and then find your clarity and your peace. So yeah. with spirituality, that's where you find peace. And right. um, that is where the good book that I follow, this Philippians, it says, oh, supp supplication, pre present your prayers. And then there's a bit where it says, and um, the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding will guide your heart and your mind. Right. So that means that for you to be guided in your heart and your mind, you need some level of peace. And yes. even in the Christian faith, most of the time when there's so much chaos, you're going through a traumatic experience, they take a retreat. So right. you, you, you switch off social media, you go somewhere either to Mombasa, Naivasha, whatever it is, you just take a banner phone, which is a Katulu, you go with yeah. it, and then you stay away for like three days and you pray and you find yourself with your God. Off and then you come media. back. Yes, off, off social, social media. media. So you just yeah. have that cabana phone where you can talk to maybe family and friends and say, hey, I'm, al I'm alive, I'm okay, I'm doing good. You check up on family, but yeah. then you just stay away for three days. For yeah. those who are Buddhist. Seclusion and yes. isolation. Exactly. And then for those yeah. who are Buddhist, they'll go to mountains or whatever. Um, even in the Christian faith, people will go to mountains. You hear Sijiu Kat Katoloni or somewhere, they go and yeah, retreat. Yes. yes, so spirituality, that is where it usually starts. So for is me that the main facet of humanity or the human being? 
Good. I think then uh, for me, so here's my understanding. Right. In the beginning, let me just take you back to the, because I'm of the Christian faith, um, right. let me tell you about the creation story. So right. this is something that's very interesting because I believe in God. So in the beginning, oh, there was um, the spirit was hovering over the earth, yada yada. That's that sort of thing. God begins to, um, yes. when the when the when the spirit is hovering, of course, it has to bring there was chaos. So it has yeah. to bring peace before God can start to create. So right. once the spirit was hovering, God cannot create when there's chaos. So there mm. was chaos, and then He started to utter, let there be, let there be, let there be for five days. On the sixth days, on the sixth day, God sits down and says, sits down and says, let us create man. Yeah, in our own, in our own, own image, image and likeness. And likeness. Mm -hmm. So he's not talking about him and the spirit and the son of God. He's talking mm. about some other element. But that's which th comes this into mystery play. hour is what a lot of people Yes, question. what is, let, when he said let us, mm, whom let did us. he refer to? Mm. He was referring to the earth. So okay. it was God, because uh -huh. God is not the Trinity. The right. Trinity is God in three dimensions, which mm -hmm. is just the same God. Okay. God, that is why in the beginning, he, in the Bible, he comes as a burning bush. And yeah. then in the, in the New Testament, he comes as Jesus Christ in the flesh. God comes in the flesh. Right. So what happens in the creation? God and the earth. So he picks up the earth yeah. and then they begin to create. That is why we have Mother Earth. We don't have Father Earth. We don't have anything. Yeah. From dust you came to dust, you shall return. That yeah. is why countries ashes are made. Ashes. Yes. And that is why we have mothers as countries. They are mothers. So yeah. God says, let us, take, let us create man. He picks the earth. And then right. he fills it with his spirit. That is why when we die, we go back to the earth where we came we and come our from. spirits go to heaven. Now, heaven is a spiritual place. It is not yeah. like it is somewhere, it's a location. It's just in the spiritual world. Yes. So us, we have God in us. So human beings are divinity in the flesh. Right. And then we are given dominion. So when God is creating, he has mm. earth, which is us. And then he does what? He puts in water. We okay. are 80% or is it 75% water? And then finally, he breathes air into it. These three elements are where we have dominion over. You have dominion over the earth, the air, and the sea. And when yeah. you look at our army, it is three dimensions. The Navy, yes. the Marine, yeah. na Navy, Wale Waland. Yeah. So that is where we have um, our spirit. That is why spirituality is incredibly it's important. It's a main part of yes, the human existence. Yes, it's a main part. You have to understand that you are a spirit yeah. in a physical body. In a physical body. And that is why spirituality is incredibly important. People have to believe in something. Right. So like even like if you're an yeah. atheist, believe even in atheists don't believe in God, yeah. but they will they believe, believe in, in science, something greater. They believe in themselves. Them. Yeah. They believe in. They can believe in Satan. They can decide to believe in astrology. But human right. beings have to believe in something, a higher power, something greater than them. Greater now, than people you. who uh -huh. believe or have a religion or something of the sort, it yeah. means that they believe in the sense of purpose, serving right. somebody that is beyond you and your family. Yeah. So it gives you a sense of purpose because you know you came into this world for yeah. an assignment and you owe it to a higher purpose, a, a higher purpose. Uh, higher power to yeah. do the best of your ability so yeah. once you retreat back to your spirituality that is where now Everything for those who are believers from. they can say yeah. god told me that yes. i need to do abcg i yeah. need even for the people who are not believers the elon musks the right. steve jobs they have an assignment to fulfill a purpose that is beyond them so they right. come up with ideas yeah. that go beyond their own selfish interests and desires create products for humanity so yeah. they have to believe in something for right. them to, to come up with this higher purpose. All so right, spirituality yeah. usually is the, it's the first it's place. It's the main begin. facet, actually. Yes. Of I, I, in my opinion, in your that is the yeah. first place the first um, anyone place. can begin. And, and, and uh, I think still, too, on that Oprah interview, she mentioned that if your life is chaotic or your physical existence is actually a representation of your physical being. Mm -hmm. So if you're experiencing physical chaos in your physical life, wrangles, dysfunction, uh, negativity, mm -hmm. check your spiritual uh, uh, being. There could be the same happening, so it's just a replica of what's happening to you spiritually, yes. manifesting physically. I don't know if you agree with that. I do agree because there's nothing that happens in the physical that hasn't already happened in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. In fact, the physical, uh, the physical world is a slave to the spiritual world, and that right. is why when you're about to make a mistake, you have this gut instinct, the, in the, the intuition, because in the spirit it has, it has already been foreseen. You're about to step into danger, so yeah. your gut instincts, it and and God will come to you in different ways, in dreams, in visions, through people. People say they've met angels because danger has already been foreseen in the spirit world and because yeah. of course God loves you they have to bring you to a point where you can avert the yes. danger there are people who are supposed to be involved in um, accidents and then you know there were delays yeah. something they just happened they had a premonition they woke up it wasn't as normal yeah, you know there's really always those stories yeah. just, yeah, I woke up I was not feeling it nil, nil, yes. nil. or I was speaking to someone all of a sudden I told them no 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 not today and maybe something later on happened that was so Yes. profound yeah yeah so usually it's you we are a slave to the spirit world right. and, and 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 let me tell you something there's uh, something that is also interesting which i'll tie it back to um mindset so okay. the mental aspect we started right. the spiritual you go to the mental, mental. aspect of things mm -hmm. so 
it, there's a bit in the Bible where there are this particular men, they were building a tower. It's called the Tower of Babel. Yeah. So they build all, they, they come together and they say, let us, they come up with the, with a plan. Let us, let us do this. They come up with visions, everything they need to do. And everyone is in sync and in the spirits, in their own spirits, they feel that this thing is going to happen. God yeah. came down to look at the city that they had built. This was a tower to go to heaven. To right? go to heaven. The, a yeah. tower tall enough to reach heaven. God right. had to come down to look and marvel at the city. But the city was not yet built in the physical world. God came down to look at the city that was completed in the spirit. Uh -huh. So that he had, that is why God had to stop it and the tongues and everything so that it, 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 it wouldn't come to fruition. So it has yeah. to happen in the mind. So these people, they had built an entire city in the spirit and in the mind. So in the spirit, it was complete. In the physical, they had not yet started the work. Yeah. So that is the power of the mind. And that is why they say that for you, once you build something in the mind, long enough, your body will follow it. Months yeah. later or years later, your body will go there. Um, we have, you know, when we were watching the races, 100 meter races, we, we were thinking, oh, Asafa Powell, um, uh, Gatlin Gay, I'm not Gatlin Gay, so Gatlin Gay or something like that. And then we had Usain Bolt. And then there's just a young boy. He yeah. sees himself participating and running in all these, um, in on the global stage. Nobody right. knows about him. Nobody cares about him. Yeah. Years later, he shows up as Ferdinand Omanyala. Nobody had known because we didn't think in our minds that Kenyans were capable of sprinting. Yes. We knew we were marathoners, not sprinters. But he right. had to see himself participating in those yeah. world-class kind of competitions. Then, months or is it years later, 10 yes. years later, his body had to follow him where his vision was. And that everything actually aligns and even the yes. conditions and the environment. That is the power of the mind. That is why yeah. people can, boot, can, can pull themselves by the bootstrap. Somebody is living in yeah. a Mabati house. And right. years, but every day they see themselves, they see themselves living in, 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 in mansions. Yes. Yes. Somewhere. Years later, the body yeah. will follow the mind. Right. And situation will, will align. Yes. To, uh, is, is that where now purpose comes in, mm -hmm. uh, having a vision and maybe also manifesting? And then I believe every one of us has a voice inside of them that tells them about something, that intuition. Mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, when you want to do something off, there's just something that tells you, no, this yeah. is not right. Mm -hmm. Or when somebody is trying to do something, you're like, nope, I feel like something is here and I need to find out. Yeah. Um, how can a human being actually tap into that voice that actually leads you to do the right thing? And also, what is the right thing in life? Maybe we can get to that as we proceed. Um, okay. So, uh, of course, then it has to start with a place of peace. That is why you have to go on a journey of self-mastery. And self-mastery is a journey. It's a personal journey that you go on to. And you have to come to a place of peace. Once your mind has been decluttered, then you can hear your voice. So, for those of us who are believers, we will call it the voice of God. For the people who really don't want to be uncomfortable uh, to, or to cause some discomfort in certain places, we'll call it intuition. There's people who will call the universe. Um, they just yeah. have different Others say for the same spirit. Thing. Yes, others will say the spirit you know. told me. But yeah. once you have decluttered your mind, you can be, you are able to listen to yourself more clearly. I don't know if this has happened to you. Whenever you hit rock bottom, sometimes God will take away people from your life intentionally to give, to bring you to a place of yourself. So you begin yeah. to lose jobs, you begin to lose business, you begin to lose friends, people whom you used to call no longer pick your calls. It's because you're being taken to a place of peace and quiet. Be with yourself for once. Take yeah. yourself out of the noise. But then to other people, that will be tragedy and rejection and it will be like hell breaking loose yeah. if, if, you, if you can't see it from that filter. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the filter you, you're using right now to say this is, is like a place of abundance mm -hmm. and also a place of assurance, self-affirmation. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. I feel no evil. And as much as this tragedy is happening to me, mm -hmm. but I know it's shaping me and maybe it's part of my destiny yes. to make me bigger and greater. Uh, so if you can't see it from that filter, mm -hmm. you'll see it as this is a problem. I'm being rejected, I'm being abused, mm -hmm. and everything is against me. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think because life will not always handle people with kids' gloves. Right. And um, that is why they say the toughest battles are given to the toughest soldiers. Right. So you're not supposed to have it easy in life. Yeah. So once you're being pushed and you feel like things are being thrown out of your life, um, because I'm a believer, I'll say this, people get into different seasons. And when yeah. you're walking into the next season of your life, you have to declutter. Even nature declutters itself. Right. Um, I'm a product of nature as a woman. Every right. month I have to declutter my system. I know yes. you know what I'm saying. Every month nature has to take away the stuff that is in my system. That is why Tunasemanga ni damu ya mwezi. It follows the moon. And, right. and that is why even nature, when uh -huh. it's raining and kuna floods, um, it's raining heavily, it usually yeah. declutters the earth, takes away right. the plastic, everything that is on the earth, and it has to come to a rebirth. 
-hmm. That is how all of us have to live through life. So once there's that clutter and you have to stay away from the noise and you sit in your corner and you're thinking, oh, things are bad, it's winter, it's gloomy. Yeah. You're about to get into a season of the sunshine and abundance. So you have to prepare yourself for the next season of your life. Right. So in that moment, if you're wise enough and you've gone through a journey of self-mastery and you're self-aware, yeah. you will not find it as something tough and something difficult. Because sometimes right. you can just go down the wrong path. For how long? At some yeah. point, you just have to go back to yourself. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, th that's a very imp important part. Now, uh, for someone who's gone through a journey of self-doubt, um, resentment, anger and bitterness and maybe you're holding on to uh, past pain or past trauma somebody mm -hmm. did something bad to you maybe in your childhood uh, also in your teenagehood and maybe it continued and it picked up now you're a full-blown adult and mm -hmm. the same same cycles of uh, neglect abandonment rejection are still with you mm -hmm. how can someone disconnect from that and and be free mm -hmm. freedom so the first bit we have uh, we've agreed that you have to come to a point of self-awareness right you have to be self-aware um Human beings and the young people and even women, most of the time women and even young people, very good at gathering information. This is what I usually say about school. We go to school to learn how not to think. Mm -hmm. So you go to school, you're taught how to collect information, not knowledge. So we yeah. are very good at collecting information. Abdomen, thorax, what was that? Grasshopper. Col yeah, yeah, that was just <laughs> collecting information. We were yeah. That was not knowledge in any way. Not because practical knowledge. knowledge yes, like knowledge is information that you. has been analyzed. Right. So if you tell me that at a particular time of day it becomes dark, I interpret yeah. that as night. Now that right. becomes knowledge. So we mm -hmm. collect information. So school teaches you how not to think. You're told um, this is your assignment. Have you can have this information at the end of six months, at the end of one year, regurgitate it. At the end of four years, regurgitate it. I give you an A, I give you a B, I give you a D. Very good at collecting information. Right. I'm seated here. Someone can ask, which books do you read? I give them the kind of books that I read. I tell them the audios that I listen to. I give them even videos. And right. at the end of the day, the next guest who's going to come to sit on this seat, they're also going to ask the same questions. So right. we're very good at collecting information and knowledge, and yet we don't use that knowledge. Knowledge yeah. is not power. Applied knowledge We is say knowledge power. is power, by no. the way, a Applied lot. Applied knowledge <laughs> is power. Or applying the knowledge yes, is power. Yes, you can have all the knowledge in the world. Do you know why people suffer in the corporate world? Why people suffer in the real world? Uh -huh. We have people who are successful. Men and women successful. Mm -hmm. Being finessed by people who have not gone to school. Yes, actually why? most of the big bosses do yes. not even have masters and those PhDs. Yes, and why are being finessed in the real world by people who, have, who lack papers? It's because uh. those people in the real world have mastered life. You right. only have knowledge. You've only yeah. garnered knowledge. So you find yeah. this hide me identities. Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a boss, I'm a CEO, I run a business, I have all this income, is mine, me, 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 me. I went to school, I have the degree, but this guy. Yeah. And you look at the guy, doesn't even have a certificate. Taking yeah. advantage of her. Why? Because very good at collecting knowledge and information and we play by rule books because school right. and, and work gives you rules. Here you're taught the time you're supposed to clock in down to what you're supposed to wear. So most people don't know how to think for themselves outside in the real world. You suffer, yeah. you don't know how to communicate. Women have this problem. I've dated, I've been hurt so many times, they don't want to deal with men anymore. The problem yeah. is not to avoid men. The problem, the problem is, is not, not to reject men. So the men are not, is not dogs. to avoid women. It's <laughs> men are not dogs, right? <laughs> <laughs> they are not, of course. Because it's about understanding how, because it's a man's world. Right. It's all about understanding how to deal with men. Yes. And then now, thriving, not just surviving, thriving yeah. in a society that has men. Most of us don't know how to deal with that. Maybe uh, still on that man part, uh, you come from, uh, I'm not saying you, uh, mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm using you as a, as a first person. Maybe you come from a background of abuse, yes. uh, fatherly abuse. Mm -hmm. or the first, And they say the first man you meet as a child is your father, and mm -hmm. the first woman you meet is your mother. Mm -hmm. And they demonstrate to you and model to you who a mother figure or who a father figure is. Yes. And also that's the filter you carry along, mm -hmm. back to you're a product of who mm -hmm. and where you come from. Yes. So when you heard a dysfunctional dad who was emotionally absent, verbally ab mm. abusive, physically abusive, uh, they were also dismissive to your mother mm -hmm. and maybe they were controlling. Yes. And uh, all, all, the, all the things you picked up as ca are, are chaos and now you have this filter, men are chaotic, men are not responsible, you're resentful. Or maybe vice versa mm -hmm. now, women mm -hmm. are abusive, yeah. chaotic and whatnot. And it becomes a thing that you have to work on over time to also heal mm -hmm. and now be self-aware of it and now start putting yourself in a space where you start accommodating now yes. other men. Mm -hmm. So how can such a person also shell the way from that? Now you become self-aware, you understand that you have problems, you have demons. All of us have demons. We have light and we have demon inside of us. So you need to go to therapy. Oh, we have demons we inside have demons. of us. Yeah, inside of us we all, all have demons and we have the light. Right. Let me tell you, I'm a mother. 
I can tell you for free, I, I, can't, I, I can't commit murder. I'm a decent human being until you touch my child. Right. That is when you can know the demon and the devil that can arise inside of me. You see yeah. it all the time with the women, a very polite, very nice chick. Just chick am totoake or the partner, women will go berserk on you, touch their man or their kids. Yeah. Uh, they go crazy on you. I, I can only talk for women because I'm a woman, so this is not just to you know be biased. So right. it is. We all have demons. We all we like the story of, of David in the Bible. All of us knew David was just that young shepherd, innocent in the in the in the in the wilderness taking care of sheep. Nobody knew that he had murder instincts in him. He was yeah. capable of stealing, Killing not only just stealing boat. someone else's uh -huh. wife, but also committing murder while at it. Right. So we all have demons. And he was God's best friend. You know? Yes, yes. Ministry. And that is, and that is why <laughs> the grace of God is sufficient every other time his yeah. mercy is upon us. You cannot right. know the extent to which you can go until you're presented with a problem or until right. you're presented with that, with that thing. So you have to go to therapy. Back yeah. to your question when you're talking about um, people who have gone through these traumatic um, experiences, they yeah. really have to work on them. They really have to get healed. They really have to get um, sorted out. People yeah. who grew in chaotic environments, this is what science has, has proven, they will go looking for chaos in their lives without yeah. knowing. And attracting chaos. And attracting people. chaos unless yeah. they sort it out because they only show of affection and love is through the chaos. So th that right. is why most women who are used to chaos, when they find a good man, proper man, good good guy, he's boring. They are used yeah. to chaos. They are used to be to be put on their feet, always have to work for that love. So yeah. someone who came from an environment where they were not shown love, where yeah. they had to pay for that love in one way or the other, where yes. they had to, uh, for them to be loved, they had to be good, they had to be nice, or they had to fight for that love. That is what yeah. they will always seek. So that is, yeah. that, is, that, is, that is why people need to go to therapy and have those things um, sorted out. Yeah, they say that the things, debriefing. Yes, the things that invalidated us when we were young are the things that will grow up looking validation from. What so if what if this stems down from your own mother? Your mo your mother is the one who hurt you, mm -hmm. or your father is the one who hurt you, and the still the Bible, is, uh, the good book says also your first spiritual parents are your mother and your father because yes. they gave you life, mm -hmm. and all the people that were supposed to nurture you, mentor you, and show you the way, they are the ones who hurt you. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it takes years. Yeah, it does. It takes years. It does take years because, um, I mean, if if something that has happened over you for years, it's not something that you can just pull off in a couple of months, in a couple of days. People go to, to therapy sometimes for years because they have to work on themselves for years. That is why self-mastery is not a destination. It is a journey, something that you work on for the rest of your life. I'll tell you, for instance, if you're angry, I'm an angry person. Um, I'm easily rattled. So I have become so aware of that. It does not mean that now, because I have grown up, um, I'm, I'm way into my 30s right now. So it does not mean that I'll never be angry. I've been angry all my life. So it, yeah. it would be very difficult for me to say that I'll never be angry. But now I'm, I'm more aware. You're aware, I'm aware. of that part of So me. yes, yeah. I'm aware. So anytime someone rattles me, I, I retreat you're because like, I know. Nope, I see where <laughs> you're taking yeah. me. Not today. So <laughs> I'll accept that, yes. Yeah. I'm going through an, 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 em an emotion right now, which is anger. So let right. me just allow myself to simmer down. So it yeah. doesn't take away the emotion, but at least right. now I become so aware. So yeah. going to therapy, having the treatment, um, is it's, 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 it's a journey. And most people have to embrace um, going, going to, to treatment. We are um, a product of, uh, of our DNA. We're an amalgamation of the, pl of the places from which we came. So I'll give yeah. you an interesting thing. Um, there are people, for instance, in the United States right now, the African Americans, who are incredibly f um, f have a phobia for water. And yeah. this can be taken back to the fact that there was the transatlantic slave. Yeah. Um, a, a, tr a transatlantic slavery. So it is, Im it is embedded in their DNA. Years later, African Americans still cannot go through the water, most of them. Now yeah. let, us br let us bring it back home. There are people today, if you put two kids here, yeah. One child, uh, two kids, two years, none of them has ever experienced um, a snake. They've never seen a snake. Do you know there's one child who'll run to the snake and there's another one who'll run away? Because from the places where we came, we came from societies where in Africa we used to be identified by animals. So uh -huh. there are people like, for me, I come from the Western community, we have Ingwe. Ingwe is a, chi is a cheetah. Right. So, and there are the people who were guided by evil, uh, eagles, there are people who had snakes as their totems or their symbols. So a yeah. child who came, for instance, that child who ran towards a snake, you will realize that perhaps from the DNA where he came from, their symbol was a snake, they, they, they revered the snake. So oh. the, that child will be drawn to a snake. Yeah. Never seen a snake but in a their life. A snake is a bad and spiritual then there's representation. Another, no, a, a snake is wise. Yeah. 
As a lot of people say, if you see a snake in your dream, uh, it's not a good thing. No, uh, I'm not so sure about dreams, but I know that a snake is associated with wisdom. With wisdom, yeah. Yes. As wise as a serpent, yes. as the, yes. uh, the saying goes. Yes, yes. And uh -huh. then um, the other one who will run away, perhaps they had a very traumatic experience with a snake. And even water. Right, if, yeah. for instance, in my clan, I came from an environment where someone in my DNA, Ali, ali drown, ali zama kwa maji. Yeah. As a community and as a family and as a clan, that situation really traumatized us. We have trauma towards water. And there's right. someone else who will be easily drawn to water. So yeah. we are an amalgamation of our DNA and right. from the places from which we came. So yeah. understanding that you are not just you. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example for myself. Now let me just speak for myself before we can even proceed. Um, I'm a public speaker. So when I started speaking, an uncle of mine calls me. He had seen the things, a few things that I have done, I had just posted back then on, on, on Facebook. Right. And he calls me and he says, um, I can see the things that you're doing and with the way you communicate, with the way you present yourself. Do you know you come from a lineage of orators? I'm like, right. I didn't know. He says, yeah, your grandfathers were orators. So I can see that the mantle in your home was passed to you. I'm like, right. So it validated that Please. call. Yeah, it validated <laughs> me. But at that particular time I was working, I was like, I don't yeah, believe like that. What is that? Yeah. Yes, I don't believe it. But, but there are people today who, yeah. um, you know, they come from very, very average homes. But they are very yeah. polished, very laid back, very yeah. measured. The way they speak, the way they dress, the way they talk, the way they associate with, them, with others, they are right. grounded. When you go back to their lineage, you realize that they come from a lineage of kings and, and chiefs mm -hmm. and royalty. So yeah. even with them, the way they carry themselves, they carry themselves like royalty. And yeah. yet they don't have an understanding that they come from a lineage of royals. Meghan Markle's story comes in. I've just, I've just seen, I was watching a critique by Wendy Williams who had the Wendy Williams talk show. Mm -hmm. I bro, I follow a lot of <laughs> Americans. Like all my life I've been through 106 and Punk and whatnot. Yes. So there, there's a story about Meghan Markle. Uh, she had uh, her first marriage mm -hmm. with somebody else yeah. and they divorced and uh, uh, she met uh, Prince Harry, mm -hmm. uh, Was it? I think it was at a, sh a, sh a restaurant or maybe at one of her mm -hmm. films. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they exchanged contacts. She didn't know that Harry comes from, you know, uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, what is it called, mm -hmm. the palace. And look at her now. Mm -hmm. She's actually one of the most revered women in Hollywood right yes. now. So maybe if she trusts and maybe look back, you realize <laughs> way, way back, and her mother is black, her mm -hmm. dad is white. Mm -hmm. You realize there's a lot in her lineage mm -hmm. that probably if she could be aware of, mm -hmm. she would have packaged herself early, mm -hmm. not even go through that first yeah, yeah, marriage yeah. and divorce. Yeah. She's naturally right. drawn to royalty. So right, yeah. 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 So, so attracting so such mm -hmm. you know, people. Yes, there are people. And then there are people who are very easy with, 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 with musical instruments. Like someone will just be on the piano in like three days, they can beautifully play the piano or a guitar. Then when they trust their roots, they realize they come from a lineage of musicians. Right. And so that thing follows you. You're, you're an amalgamation of, of, of things that come from the past. Right. So um, and that is something that uh, most of us, the moment we begin to understand that, it will it will serve us highly. Yeah. So when we're talking even about um, when we're talking about the the, the mental aspects of things, uh, even in the physical aspects, when you're taking care of yourself in the uh, physically, because you have to take care of your body. Do you know that uh, weight gain is a survival uh, mechanism? Uh -huh. Weight gain is a, is a survival mechanism. So I'll take you back to um, the agri actually when we were still foragers. So in our foragers, we were vegetarians. We uh -huh. did not know how to hunt. We didn't have fire. Do you believe we were monkeys? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> did we evolve? Like <laughs> courtesy of Charles Darwin? Yeah, yeah. So by the <laughs> way, uh, if I can move away from the creation story, I, I, yeah. I, I, it, it makes sense. Do you believe we, we came from, we had a tail? Because mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, they say we, there's a body part yeah, of yeah, us yeah. that they believed had a tail. Mm -hmm. And we grew the tail, fed off, and then we started from crawling and then walking, yeah, and yeah. finally we are upstanding. Yeah, <laughs> but when you, when you follow the Big Bang, it's a bit, mm, because nothing begets nothing. I mean, um, you can't say that there was just a spark. That spark had, had, had to come from where, from somewhere. So yeah. it, 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 it overrides it. Nothing begets nothing. So nothing which can just happen is true? From Charles Darwin, the Big Bang, or the creation? Science is not, in co is not conclusive. So uh -huh. um, we can only... Well, we can only take what, what but we can. But they say and science is can't. factual and physical, it's but spirituality uh, is mystical. <laughs> no, science is not. Con the beautiful thing about science is that it's not conclusive. So you uh -huh. cannot, with science, you cannot say that this is written in this stone. Is this is how verdict. this yeah. is how it's supposed to be because things mutate, things change, we yeah. evolve, and things happen. So that is why I was even taking you through the. That's why it's it because it's inconclusive. That is why we came from the tail and then we've evolved. We become 
the, the, the super beings that we are today and then we are yeah. going into AI, AI and then perhaps we'll be cyborgs um, right. at, at, at a particular <laughs> time in, 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 in the future. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but, but I hope, yeah, I hope and we won't And then there's that story of, uh, what do they call, aliens. I, I yeah. don't know if you've seen those updates a lot in states. Mm -hmm. There's foreign objects. There's also predicted that in, I don't know, a thousand years from now, there'll be foreign beings in a foreign planet. Mm -hmm. In fact, they've said they're, they're already looking into those foreign beings mm -hmm. in another planet. I don't know. It's so scary. D yeah, yeah. But that is why, you know, the universe, they say that um, this is not the only universe that we've had. We have, we have so many galaxies and so many. Yeah. But the good thing is that this is the only planet with human beings. Of the nine, you know, is it now eight planets? It's the only yeah. planet that has us, um, this kind of species. And so we are, we are really happy with that. So yeah. now when I was taking you back to the foragers, when we were yeah. just vegetarians, we didn't have the fire. So the invention of the fire is what made us omnivores because now we could go hunt and come and smoke and the meat. It. Yes. Mm. So before that, for the longest time, we just were vegetarians. So our body that is why for, for most people, consumption of meat becomes very heavy to your system and the milk because yeah. we, were not, we were not used to that. We just used to go and we used to go and just get the, the fruits yeah. and, and the vegetables and prepare the that. Herbs. And that's it and the herbs. Yeah. So once we left from the foragers and then we, become, we became hunter-gatherers, of course now people would go and hunt. So the men would go and hunt. And then sometimes because of the seasons and the change in seasons, they would go and be stuck there for like three, four days because it's a cold season. It's a cold season. The animals have hibernated. They can't find animals very fast. Yeah. So what would happen? They come back weeks later. The women, yeah. children, and the old people are now emaciated. They right. are growing thin because they don't have food. It's during the planting season. Sisi Kwetu in our Luya, uh, Luya uh, part of the, of the country, Mwezi Wasita, Mwezi Wasaba, they are about usually saying Mwezi Anja because yeah. people are planting, there's no food. So during yeah. that particular that time, uh, particular time, people would die before the men would come with food. It's very difficult for them to hunt, so yeah. they would die. So as you evolve, and this is in a series of so many years, as you evolve, your body and our minds began to realize, if I grow thin, I'm about to die. When you're gaining weight or when you lose weight, the first place it shows, it's on your stomach. Mm -hmm. So you gain weight here, or when you lose weight, it shows on your stomach. So yeah. your body, whenever there's no fat around your stomach, that is why when people lose weight after some time, they gain it back immediately. Your mind goes, we've lost weight. We've lost weight, we are about to die. That is, you know, when you see the f people in farming areas, in drought areas, no, none of them will die of hunger and they are big. They're usually emaciated and they're thin. Yeah. So your body goes, we are thin, we are about to die. Your brain kicks in, the placebo effect. Placebo effect is when your body mm -hmm. tricks your mind with fake treatment, yeah. uh, uh, masquerading as the real thing. So yeah. your body tells your brain, cravings, 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 yeah. sugar, carbohydrates, sugar, carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. You begin to eat yourself to, yourself to stupor until yeah. you gain back the weight. And the yeah. body's like, now we are good. So in short, anybody who feels scared because they've gained weight. Yes, it's your body you protecting <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, now you know the reason <laughs> and why. And uh, it's, it's your healthy. brain protecting you. But you know, there's being overweight and obesity, which is not a good thing to your health for your health. Yeah, of course. Now anything anything that is done over the top, of course, now becomes becomes toxic. So yeah. when you overeat, because I think obesity is when now people can't stop eating. Right. Um, yeah, you overeat and you overdo it. Right. But um, m usually, most of the time, the reason why people gain all the weight back is because it's a survival mechanism for your body. And you right. know, you see, we can trace it back to thousands, right. perhaps even millions of years, right. with with the way your body and your mind is, um, your mind is, is, is our mind is the, the way it's 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 it's, it's wired. Right. So, it's a it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, and that's why even people who go through gastric bypass. Yeah. When I talk about they come back and they're very thin. Three years later, they've gained back all the weight. Yeah. If they don't have the discipline, the mind will still go, no, we have to eat. Yeah. And you can't stop it. Right. Uh, I've seen, I've actually seen last week, uh, Oprah Winfrey was trending. I don't know, black people, anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, they have, she has a movie called uh, The Color Purple. Mm -hmm. And they've been dressed in this exact color that Ooh. you have. Like, if just check YouTube Color Purple, mm -hmm, you'll mm -hmm. see all the interviews they've done. They yeah. have a movie called The Color Purple. Right. It also so means something spiritual, anyways. Mm -hmm. And she's lost weight, and uh, mm -hmm. they've related it to something called Ozemia. And mm -hmm. I think Elon Musk talked about it, and they're mm -hmm. like, no, people should not be losing weight to, you know, feature in films and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's Oprah, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, why can't it be a good thing to lose weight? Actually, it is a good thing to lose weight because um, it's, it's, it's a way that keeps you fit and, and whatnot. But we were talking about self-awareness. So the moment the cravings come in, 
and all of a sudden you want to eat, you want to eat, you have that awareness that it's just your mind trying to trick you into believing that you're about to die. So let us eat so that we can just be fat right. and we will not die, ah, will not okay. die of hunger. So it's a so mind trick. It's a mind <laughs> trick. Your mind, that is how your mind is wired, especially for those of us who are in the savannah area. That is why people yeah. who are in this region in Africa, we generally we are big people. Yeah. Um, when they and say and Africans <laughs> are well endowed, <laughs> which is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's, now it's a good thing. So losing weight that, is not uh, a bad thing. Let's move away from that and now mm -hmm. talk about profession mm -hmm. uh, for a person who wants to package themselves in a way that they have a certain appeal right. to uh, maybe a certain target audience mm -hmm. or a certain target market. For example, now the corporate space, now mm -hmm. that you are you're also a corporate trainer, right. maybe what do you offer to people in such spaces? Um, basically, it's, it's about leadership and communication. I think those are the two two places that most people are failing and right. for me the most important thing is communication most people do not know how to communicate right. um because let me tell you sk language because communication is is, is is language language is the sim single most powerful tool ever given to mankind you want to make peace use language you want to bring war language they say that the pen is more powerful than the sword so communication if you can learn how to master we were given religion through language um, the stories that people say they are stories and they are myths, but the, re the reason why they are convincing is the language, a language of hope, a language of faith. So if you can master how to weave your language into how you communicate, it, yeah. becomes, um, it becomes a powerful tool. People who can understand, um, and that is why, <laughs> and I know we're seated here, media is the single most powerful tool in any nation. It can either be used to build or it can be used to propagate propaganda and, and destroy because of the language that they yeah. use. World War One, two. One World One, two, uh, and and of course yeah. when we when we saw with World War Two with Hitler, Goebbels, he was the chief propaganda uh, propagandist, and and, yeah. and and things went the way they did. And, and Hitler, actually, radio is the most powerful tool. It of was the most powerful tool. Time. And Adolf, yeah. when you listen to Adolf, Adolf is one of the most powerful orators. He was right. very good at convincing the masses. Do you know what it takes for you to convince an entire people right. to almost wipe out? millions of people, people on on, yeah. on on that particular um, nation you really must have been good at communicating and yes. you really have must be good at using language now right. language can be used to appeal to people's emotions right. even going in into this particular dispensation and and um and and this government right. they, prop they 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 had a narrative uh -huh. a hustler narrative which right. appealed to most uh, people and the masses and that language wherever they went yeah. it was i understand you because i'm a hustler Right. So I'm it speaking your language. I'm speaking your, your language behalf. on your behalf. So <laughs> it's all about communication. Okay. It's all about language. Right. So they didn't have to 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 come up with very sound and you know majestic and magnificent um, mm. type of language to try and lure the the elite or the middle class who are educated. They know who votes, and yeah. the person who votes is the hustler. So communicate their language that they understand. Yeah. So language is a single most powerful tool. Effective communication, it also takes me back to that. How can a person communicate effectively now as a public speaker? Yes. Or one who is trying to strike um, a rapport or a relationship mm -hmm. with maybe someone of a higher caliber or a yes. higher culture. For example, now a student who is just learning how to get into the world of corporate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. get a job. You right. know, there's people, you've mentioned there's people who don't know how to communicate, even saying hi, and the, the <laughs> the, they have a, an awkward demeanor. <laughs> meaning just the way they present themselves is really off, yes. you know, and there's that thing of first impression. Mm -hmm. I've been to auditions myself before even I got into radio is the first thing is like, we didn't like your first presentation, sorry, and also <laughs> you are a little bit too young, <laughs> and that time you're so green, you're yeah. just an intern yes. and whatnot, so all, over time when you learn it and you hack it now, mm. it becomes a thing. Yeah. Now for a person who doesn't know how to do that, how can they walk down that journey? That is why communication is a skill. It is not something that you're born with. It's something that you have to put work, time, and effort, um, energy into it all the time. So if you know the spaces that you have to go in for the most part require that you communicate, you have to master communication. And because it is a skill, there are different levels and hierarchies and tiers to it. And you have to understand the different environments and the demographics that you're in. So perhaps if I'm coming to speak to a group of the elite, you know, these are CEOs, rockstar executives. These are people who are well-learned, who are well-read. So I will not come with some, you know, hogwash type of conversation because I know the kind of people that I'm addressing are people who are well read and so they're expecting some top tier kind of content or information from myself. Yeah. Now if I'm addressing a very youthful audience, um, high schoolers, I will have to appeal to that particular audience and understand how to communicate to them. Yeah. Now back to your question when you're talking about young people who are in, in school or perhaps are just uh, done with school and they want to get into the job market. Yeah. You have to understand your industry, where you operate and how your industry op um, 
how things work in your industry and then have to you have to practice all the time sometimes it it, it can be as simple as just looking yourself in the mirror and um, assuming that you're the CEO yeah. of Safaricom when we, when we started the show you we talked about Safaricom before you can go in because most people don't you, you don't want to insult people's pedigree you don't want to go to an audience of people not know anything about them not know anything about your stuff not know anything about yourself you really have to master the thing that you're doing now yeah. you have to do it over and over again look at yourself imagine yourself you're the CEO come up with a speech come up with something and then present present yeah. it to people um, Steve Jobs was very good at marketing. I think he's the rock star marketer of a generation of our time. Yeah. A thousand songs in your pocket. But and do also you the know Apple products. <laughs> yes. And do you know for him to make a 45 keynote, it used to take him like a week or two right. to prepare that speech. So he would write like a full speech would be which would be like several pages. And then he would cut it into points. And then cut those points into points, into points, into sub points until he was left with one sentence. A thousand songs in your pocket. And that is what you come and present. So what you see people present for 45 minutes as a keynote, sometimes yeah. it's weeks of preparation and presentation. And that is why I said, when you begin, you don't, have to, you don't want to insult people's ped pedigree. You have to put in the time and the effort and understand how to communicate. How right. do you use language in the particular uh, place that you're in? Yeah. There, are, there are people who are very particular about how you dress because communication is not just about how you speak. It's right. about how you present yourself, yeah. how you dress for the occasion, how and you that look. that first impression, like yes. I said. Yes, how yeah. you look. Yeah. Um, because <sighs> this thing of, let's go back to dating, what most people say. You know, me yeah. as men, you don't fall in love with the personality in the beginning. Yeah. In the beginning, you fall in love so with what, what you, you see. see. <laughs> so right. it, people, you don't want people to be like, me ni kona content. Wana fawa ni pati time. No. How beauty, you present yourself, people will already. Internal. Yes, <laughs> beauty is internal. Uh, you know, I'll be, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, smart, I'm intellectual. See, I'm a stem, in a X -ray. <laughs> <laughs> but which is very yeah. true. So yeah. be, when you're standing before, I see, oh, the, the way you present yourself, they'll rate you before yes. even listening to you. Even and your body language even and, and your moves, your gestures. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Do you know there are people who. Um, and this has happened to me so many times, especially when I was just starting out. Like, I'll just right. dress for the occasion. Uh, yeah. Of course, I know that one-on-one uh, -on -one communication or one-on-one -on -one presentation is that look good and then sound intelligent. Usually, that's the first thing. So, number yeah. one is look good. So, every time I walk into a room or I walk into um, an establishment, and with the way I'm dressed, the soldiers, from the way we want to interact, I usually yeah. know I've hit the jackpot. Because right. the, the way I'm dressed, so the way they're, like they're like, hey, this, this chick <laughs> is there. The this yeah. chick, is she, she knows her place. She knows her stuff. Yes, uh -huh. She's perhaps here to see the CEO. She's yes. not a joke. And by the time I open my mouth to speak confidence, false confidence, um, right. usually they give me access. Um, mm. I, I, and I get into those establishments. And now you said somebody cannot tell between true confidence and fake you confidence. You can't tell between fake confidence and the real confidence. So in the okay. beginning, you can fake it. You can uh. just... I'm confident, I'm confident, this, I'm yeah. confident. And with every and fiber of up. your being, it builds up. Yes, yeah. you know you're not confident. But yeah. after some time, your body, your mind, your brain picks it up. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the thing that I was telling you about the, 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 the Babel of Tower thing, yes. and they created this thing, they built this thing in the spirit, while in the yeah. physical, nothing had it happened, it all there. started in the mind. So, so the mind will be like, oh, we are confident, we are confident. And then yes. your mind, because the alchemist, whatever you desire, your brain or your the alchemist is like, um, the universe will conspire, conspire to bring it to, to your, bring your it, yeah. uh, to bring it to your, conf to your fruition. So yes. your brain, because it was created, your cre your, our brain was created for survival. It wasn't yeah. built for success. So this thing about success, 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 my brain was built for success, you have to trick it into success right. your body that is why most people who are successful mm -hmm. are not uh, that considered crazy because yeah. the normal thing is just stay back controversy um yeah. the hate and all that the brain is like it's too much it's too yeah. much too much i don't much know if time, you saw this effort. recent interview by elon musk where he said he used the f word and mm -hmm. said they can go f themselves up and mm -hmm. you know elon musk is is a revolutionary yes. but now you, you you've seen what he's done to mm -hmm, x mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, the, the rest of yeah. the inventions now mm -hmm. so a lot of people are questioning mm, what is this guy talking and mm -hmm. how is he talking and mm -hmm. yet he's like a role model to almost all the big inventory companies like right now yes, yes. you know he really used he went off <laughs> Completely went off. You can check it out. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah. station picked it up, including CNN. Mm -hmm. Maybe to Nisisia to Kusema. <laughs> <laughs> but, but doesn't it happen to the best of them? Um, you can see it's the same thing that also happened to Kanye, um, Kanye West. Yeah. These revolutionaries almost all the Is time. Is he not unhinged mentally? Um, I, okay, I, I, I wouldn't know, but here's my, my, my thought. My thought is that um, Kanye plays to the gallery. Um, of social media and of spectators, he's really mastered the masses. He's really mastered um, people and how they think. So and he has he has this cultic following of believers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, he has he has a way of 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 
injecting himself in and out of situations and knowing how he knows how it's going to play and out. And that's communication anyway. rather. Yes. He runs a lot. Yes. And he Ranting. knows how it's going to play out in yeah. the end. He knows how it's uh, um, eventually it's going to play out. So, um, I, and I think those are those are maestros. He's, he's a genius in his own right. He's a genius in, in, in his own mind. And I think it's also Elon Musk who said, I'm not a genius. I just do engineering yeah. every day. Um, right. That's what that's what makes me great. People think I'm smart. Um, I'm not smart. I just do this the same stuff all ev all day every day. Right. Um, and 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 I think that is something that all of us should at least try and and, and borrow a leaf from, especially when you want to communicate. Just do the thing every day. You become um, you become so good at it. Right. People look at you and they say you're a genius. Yeah, right. Twenty five yeah. years, man. Or you're good at what you do. Twenty five years. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for a person like you, who's a public speaker, you communicate a lot, and uh, there's a place where it talks about commanding, communicating, and then connecting. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe for a person who doesn't have that uh, uh, speech consistent, so maybe that mastership of yeah. uh, some of the keywords that you have to use while addressing people, mm -hmm. even the body language, connecting with the people, uh, their eye contact, there's sometimes this funny eye contact. Mm -hmm. And there's, I was, uh, there was a time I was also being trained in stories of speech, and uh, they are telling us that, you know, you don't have to like stay into a specific person, you can just look over <laughs> their heads, <laughs> even if they're standing. Just to, uh, And when you do that, nobody can notice mm -hmm. if you are, you have skewed mm -hmm. uh, phony or eye of contact mm -hmm. or whatnot. So how can a person become perfect at that? Now that you've done it, and yeah, I know you've yeah. spoken to students uh, and yes. so many other places. Of course, well. starting out was horrible. Starting out, um, I, I, I hadn't mastered anything. And for me, I'm just a student of life. Um, I'm a student of the streets. I didn't go to any school to learn how to speak. It's something that just came naturally for me, and I decided I'm just going to go with the flow. And yeah. in the beginning, of course, and you know, over time, that, that particular analogy has been dismissed where you have to look over people. They can tell. People can tell. People are not stupid. And people can read energy from a room. When you're yeah. looking over them, they can tell. So sometimes it's just good to be honest and say, ooh, especially when you're speaking to a group of people whom you know are well versed in the subject matter than you are. And yeah. you can just get in and say, um, and just be honest and say, hey, uh, I understand that all of you are well read more than I am, but the reason why we are here is because you think I have something to say. <laughs> yeah, that I you wouldn't want say <laughs> that. <laughs> That would be <laughs> self-sabotaging so for me. That you have, I'm, I'm talking in the <laughs> sense of a speech. This is not oh, an in the interview. Sense of a speech, yeah. Yes, not an interview. When you're, when you're going to an interview, you have to fake it. But yeah. when it's a speech where I'm, I'm giving a speech to individuals, I'm giving a speech to executives. I mean, yeah. executives, these are CEOs, people who've gone to school, they have PhDs, they have 30 yeah. years under their belt right. of doing this particular job. So, And I'm just here naive, 33 years of age, what do they have to learn from me, 60-year-old men? You yeah. understand? So when I'm You're starting, young, yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, what is it? What? Old. Yes, but but <laughs> You're of giving them a different <laughs> test. <laughs> yes, and you can imagine. Yeah. Of course, I have something to tell them. Um, you can imagine you have 16-year-olds, inventors and, and and developers who have to stand before people and say, "This is where um, yeah. AI is going. This is where the next generation is going." And they have every right because they are right. sitting before people who this internet is something that wasn't um, something that was even fathomable oh, during that time. Yes, when they were growing up. Yeah. So even when you're standing before people and having some level of honesty, you don't have to like now throw yourself under the bus and say, oh, yeah. I'm incompetent. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a bit nervous. But that will require a lot of grit and confidence and yes. courage. Yes, after some time. That would also come out as self-sabotage mm -hmm. unconsciously mm -hmm. anyways. Yes, yeah. and um, so people have to come up with different ways. That's why people have rituals. The basketballers, um, footballers, they have rituals. Before they get into a, a, a game, perhaps they'll just um, breathe in and say a prayer or yeah. something and ask. And also when you say ritual, it can be a little bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say a ritual is something that it's you're something used that to you performing do, yes, over, time over time so that you do it. Yes, yeah. so, so Even so before hosting a radio show yeah. or a TV show, like there's something Like for me, when, when I sat right. here, of course, the, the cameras weren't trolling, but when I sat here, yeah. let me tell you, any speaker of wha who is worth their salt will right. tell you, we're always nervous. Yeah. It, it never goes away. So right. once I sat here, because I don't know what to expect, I'm human. I don't right. know what to expect from this audience. I don't know what question, you didn't prepare me with the questions. I just, yeah. I just got a topic and I'm like, I'll go with the flow. So right. I don't know what you're about to throw at me. I don't yeah. know what you're going to discuss. And I'm just hoping that I'm going to give you the best of what I have. Right. So when I sat in this chair and I just, Bread and I now. said a prayer to God and I said, I'm like yeah. Moses, <laughs> I'm a stammerer in this situation, but you've taken me to Egypt. I'm facing Pharaoh and I have to speak speak through me yeah. and then I and, and then I went and so I know that what I speak yeah. is divinely guided so right. everything that comes from my mouth now f here um, from here going forward I'm, I'm, I'm so sure if people are very keen from the beginning yes. I was a bit I was stuttering and I've gone with the flow right. over time yes yeah. so it happens to the best of us right. that 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 is it, it's something that never goes away so right. for people who are out there and they want to get into communication I can promise you, even the best of them will tell you, they're always nervous. That is yeah. why you take time, and uh, we call it absorbing the room. Right. Absorb the room. You feed the energy. Yes. Yeah. And then um, 
then you can proceed. And if you're, if you're nervous, just say, <laughs> you, you hear most people joke, Whew, um, I'm a bit nervous, I didn't know that this yes, is what I'm going yeah. to expect, but uh, you guys are pretty funny, or you guys are, and then yeah. people laugh. I and used to see it even in our class presentations, mm -hmm. and our teachers used to judge that, they, they'd even give you marks, uh, most of my projects actually were given marks for confidence and actually communication and the speech, those speech techniques and uh, there's something in there, the creative aspect. Mm -hmm. So they would judge, this one was creative in his delivery, but maybe a cook on a content, but just the delivery mm -hmm. part actually mm -hmm. wowed uh, yes. the recipient. And as much as they didn't have facts and figures, but the, 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 that's the delivery format mm -hmm. was just amazing. That is why the best speakers are pastors, lawyers and us motivational speakers, because uh -huh. we know how to get away with big words. So someone can just come to stage, but yeah. they've riled the stage. And politicians, yeah. by the way, those right. are the best public speakers, they because public speakers are just people who speak to the public. Yeah. So pastors, they can come with hot air, politicians, hot air tubu, they've just riled the, 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 they've just riled the audience, and like, I want to listen to that politician again. They are really good at, you know, they come with the dance, they come with everything, and, and they know how to um, work up and work the masses. And there's someone who can come, man, they're boring, but they have facts. You won't listen yeah. to them. They, they had too like there are some Scott professors they it was have too much facts. content yes too much content <laughs> As a Malikona, too much but content, but the way but they speak yeah. the yes. delivery mm, the delivery is, is just not pleasant. Is, is, is is not pleasant and that is why now with public speaking now you have to learn how to once you master you absorb the room and you understand your audience and what they expect from you yes then you can know how to work up your audience so it's, yeah, it's a skill absolutely. that you have to learn it even happens to us in media in fact for you to be on this chair you must be likable and yes. warm and yes. sweet mm -hmm. also radio yeah. mm -hmm. some of the best radio presenters when you listen to them you just mm -hmm. want to continue listening because the way they communicate is so sweet yes. and warm and the crispiness of their voices mm -hmm. is exactly just captivating now and something else i can tell you um, yeah. When it comes to public speaking, what does, because public speaking is a skill and some, it's an art and a science. Right. And the people sometimes who get it are the people who've been endured by nature. Because, ah. you know, people who are born, like, I can tell it, you have a deep voice, you have a voice for radio, you have a voice for TV. So there right. are people who have, you know, they have the voice. Like, most of the time we used to listen to Kinaniko Diambo and we're like, hey, yeah. Wanze, that dude. Kina hey, you see him. <laughs> like, <"Kina mine laughs> <you know, laughs> And then you meet them and like, um, the voice doesn't the match voice the look. The voice is not matching the body. It doesn't match, yeah, it doesn't match. Oh, so Dr. Love, you mm. guys, I wish you should meet Dr. Love. <laughs> you will, a shout out, stack it Yeah, <laughs> you, you get, so there are people who've yeah. been endowed, and, and, and of course we call it, um, even for women, for TV, or most women, of course, it's pretty privilege. Um, yeah. There are people who, just because they're pretty and they're beautiful, they oh, get access Catherine into Kasabuli, rooms. Rest in yes. Peace. Ah, Major I mean, Catherine right. Kasavut, for the long, like, those days she was like, Shusho is today, you know, yeah. you know. Uh, she was the Shusho, so you know, Babes were Jesus, yeah? Yes, Ule, Ule baby yeah. Were, you know. So, you know, I think that time also men used to phone over her. So it didn't matter. And that is why for most women, even in, that, in this particular dispensation in our, in our life right now, beauty right. can only take you so far. But yeah. the good thing about beauty, it can get you to the door. So right. you have to make sure that now you have substance to keep yeah. you there. So yes. there are people who can get access into spaces. The thing yeah. that does not make them stay there is because they don't have the substance oh. that now retains So you can them. get an opportunity but not maintain it and sustain yes. it. Yes, you can't sustain it because now you don't have the substance, you don't have the discipline, you don't have the commitment, you don't have the content. The skill. Yes, well. yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, for instance, if you have, let's say for instance, you, you have that voice for radio and someone is like, oh, I need to have that voice in my I studio. I used to be on radio. I yes. want to go back now that you <laughs> <laughs> talking about it. Yes, yes. So <laughs> let's you let's use you as, as the guinea pig here. So oh, they, they bring you to <laughs> yeah, good guinea pig. Yeah, good guinea pig. <laughs> so they yeah. bring you on set and they're like, Oh, we love to hear that. I, I, I have this boy speaking somewhere, let's bring him on set and let's see if he can do he can do the he can do the, the job the job. And they give you that opportunity. Remember you didn't have to do anything to, to, to impress them. You're just going about your business, you're creating your funny content on social media, some skits here and there, and you're just talking nonsense. And then like yeah. that voice needs to be on radio. They bring you on radio and uh -huh. so they expect you to have the work ethic that will keep you on radio but because yes. you lack the uh, work ethic you lack the discipline you lack the commitment you're not even consistent in the way you show up for work they release you so so your talent your team and people say Aye, this person was talented we expected them to go s so yes, far yeah. but they just lacked the work ethic to keep right. them there but it can take you far it yeah. can give you access right yes so for young people back at home who are watching and maybe they want to be like you mm -hmm. Uh, uh, also, before you, before you tell them how they can <laughs> be like you, maybe, wha maybe what are some of the things that they should work on mm -hmm. so that when it comes to 2024 as well, mm -hmm. if they want to actually enjoy what you do, yeah. they can take down that journey and work it successfully. Um, okay, for, for people who want to get into communication, right. uh, Ama? 
Yes. That's what you're referring to? Yes, especially young people who okay. are watching. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for anyone who wants to get into communication, understand what you want to communicate about. What do you want to talk about? Because you need to have content, the substance. Mm -hmm. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about, um, you want to present, say, let's, let's take it to the corporate world. Um, everybody, most people in the corporate world want to know how they can train their staff on how to dress for that particular organization. Um, so you want to be, um, I don't know what's the term for it, but... <sighs> Out, not outfit, but really, um, what are they called? These people who take care of looks, how you look, how your presentation, image, designer, image yes, that's right. Consultant, image consultant. Yeah. You want to be an image consultant. Before, you can be, be, before you're given any opportunity to be an image consultant for any business, you have to present yourself, you have to learn how to communicate, and you have to tell them, hey, listen, um, I, I, I know that you are a particular caliber, this is how you move, this is what your story is, your culture is, and I can see that perhaps you're struggling in having your employees to follow up with the court in terms of how you, you dress them. And I would like to be here to train them, your executives, and how they can keep up with the image, not only just in appearance, in their social media, how they present the themselves to each other and to the world. But before you can, so you have to know what you want to do. Is that what you want to do? Is right. that, is, is it, do you want to do, talk about culture? Most businesses are suffering in terms of culture. Right. Values. Culture is about value systems of a business. So most businesses don't know how to retain their staff because the culture is wrong. Yeah. The culture and how the people toxic operate, toxic environments, or, yeah. or um, you know, there's discrepancies in terms of the, their classes within the, the, the teams, so they don't yeah. perform well, you know, performance. You, have, you want to be a performance coach right. and, and that sort of thing. So understand your environment and your field where you want to get into. What do you want to talk about? Or yeah. do you want to motivate? So for me, sometimes I can do both. I can do team development and also motivate teams on how to be better. Um, I, I, I believe that sometimes I get away with words, so it becomes very easy to appeal into people's emotions and make them um, follow a particular script in terms of the organization and how they want them to, to be or just to motivate them to be better individuals in the workplace. Yeah. So for instance, if that is what you want to do to motivate individuals, there's so much content out there about motivational speakers, what they do, how they present themselves, how they speak, and that is one too. You can't be an effective communication um, individual if you don't read. Because right. the exactly. more you read, it, 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 it improves and it upgrades your vocabulary repertoire. So you right. have to learn how you have words. You can easily s pick up any different words, synonyms. You're very good at communication. And you can because this doesn't come easy. Yeah. I, I mean, English is our second language. Right. Um, um, I was born in Bukusu, right. spoke Swahili most of my time. And usually because my um, lingua franca is English, I really have to like use English as my modus operandi. It's, it's my bread and butter. So right. for me to become better at it, I have to read a lot. Right. And I read personal development books. And right. I listen to these things a lot. So you right. really have to put in, uh, you really have to put in the work. The way I said about Elon Musk, he says he's not a genius. He just yeah. does engineering every day. So yeah. he just doesn't wake up and say like SpaceX. No, a right. lot goes into research. A lot goes into um, understanding the field. Even development, creative development. Yes, yeah. yes, and understanding the field that you're in. So, yeah. unfortunately, nothing comes easy. You have to put in the work. Yeah, and it takes time. It and takes time. And uh, also in journalism, we are told a great and an excellent, fantastic journalism journalist rather is mm -hmm. a good reader, a good writer, and a good speaker. Ah, because you said that's it. what you do. In fact, writing, 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 writing. In fact, writing is where, where it's at. Before you can even start speaking, yeah. I mean, I think you should begin writing because once you write, you're able to see what is coming from your head before right. you can even speak it to others. So right. once you see, eh, hey, it is, is, and was there, there's, you're like, eh, okay, yeah. I need to up my, I need to, need up, to up the here, yeah. my vocabulary and the way right. I speak, yeah. yeah. But also context really matters. Uh, there's people who interpret things differently. Uh, for example, now a story in a first impression, mm -hmm. that you can meet someone, maybe they, they were good. For example, it's a panel of judges. They are mm -hmm. judging this talent. Like I've said, I've been through so many auditions before right. I got here anyways. Mm, I feel like this dude is blah, 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 blah. He mm -hmm. can fit on radio. Mm -hmm. And this one says, no, he's a little bit young. But yada, yada, mm -hmm. yada. So uh, for first impression, do you think first impression is a good thing? It is. It is because and it is. And should it be used as a final summary of who you are? Um, not necessarily, because I think people need to give you a, a, a some more time to to prove yourself, and um, for you to be validated, it takes time. But um, the world is not fair; it wasn't built to be fair. So how you present yourself on the first day matters. It really does matter. Um, there are, there are certain people who will give you; a, they will take a chance on you, but they will only take a chance of, on you once they can see something that is inside of you. Now I'll tell you this. Um, most VCs, venture capitalists, they usually don't invest. Most of them, you listen, you, you watch Shark Tank, you listen, uh, you watch Dragon's Den. You usually, they do not invest in an, in an, in an um, entrepreneur who hasn't experienced any sort of failure or they don't have trauma. 
VCs don't invest in a product or they don't invest in a person. They invest in the story behind the founder. So right. they listen to your story. Oh, I want to build this business. I'm building this business because of people in Africa. Oh, these women, they are somewhere, they are struggling and they are taking care of their young children or these are teenage mothers. And so these products, if we sell them, the half of the money goes to take care of these people. And they're like, oh my goodness. And usually with the white founders, they're like, oh, you know, they're usually blown away by these charity cases. But usually it has to come from a story and they want to listen to a story. What do you have to say to them? So you fast before they can even put their money on you. They need to listen to a story and you have to be very good at appealing to their emotions. So yeah. once if people can know how then to present themselves on the first time. So you can imagine you're going to a VC. It's Shark Tank and you have all these sharks. They are ruthless. They don't right. care about your feelings. They don't care about your emotions. They only care about the story that you brought. Your product can be inefficient. Your product can be incomplete. Your product can have deficiency. But how do you present yourself before them for them to say, okay, your problem has prob your, your product has problems, but I have my network. I'm going to give you access into my networks to better this product, and I'm willi willing to back you up. Right. What is that? Right. Your story and how you present yourself, and you've only got one chance. Yeah. One shot. So you really have to work on yourself. And you have to be brief. Actually, I was watching an interview. We have one minute. That's why I'm being oh, told. Okay. We have one minute and then we go. Was, there's was, there was an interview I was watching and uh, they were talking about one of the award shows, those international, like the BET, the Grammys, Oscars mm -hmm. and the Emmys. They were saying that there was an award event where you were only to say five words in your speech, in your acceptance speech. Mm -hmm. Was it, I don't know, an Oscar or what? So you have to have a choreographed, mm -hmm. warm, and just a thrilling speech. So I can only imagine what it takes to say, thank you for this award and adding something flavorful there. It requires a lot of mastery. Mastery. And I can tell you for free, this is something now in that one minute that we have. Imagine you are at the airport. You are at the airport and you're going to France or you're going to South Africa. And then you see um, your favorite shark, whatever right, it is, yeah. your favorite shark or favorite CEO at the airport. They've got one minute. And you have, uh, you have only that one minute to impress them for them to give you your card the next time they get back into the country to give you that sitting right. so that you can present yourself better. Oh, you did a One miracle minute. for that. Yes, so you <laughs> have to learn how to communicate. You really yeah. learn how to compress your information and yes. give it in like 30 seconds. Like just striking the attention of yes. this person. So y and that, that means it takes time, consistency. I told you about the Steve Jobs thing. Right. One week, a whole speech, one sentence at the end of it by the time he gets on stage. All right. So it takes time. So for people who want to access you, book you up, maybe just last one as we go. Uh, do you feel like 2024 is going to be more of a life-changing year? It's going to be eventful, even in, when it comes to uh, forums and spaces where you work uh, mm -hmm. in? Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm what is your prediction? I want your prediction. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and also your manifestation, <laughs> what you're thinking about yourself <laughs> for like 2024 I, like and last week. Yeah, yeah. When I began, in the be of course, in the beginning, I told you that I'm a believer. So because I'm a believer, I believe that God has my back. God is not, God is not going to bless me. God's blessing is not dependent on the economic status of this nation. It's not dependent on my geography. God will bless me however he wants, whenever he wants, wherever I will be. Right. So I believe that 2024, regardless of what is going to happen in the economy, in the world, in the universe, there are people who made tons of money during COVID. So in the, same, in the same breath, I'm really hopeful that the people who are really, um, they have their belief, self-belief, and they do the work, they will figure it out in 2024. It is going to be a good year. Right. Yes. Amen. Uh, your where people can book you, find you, and your punchline as we go. Um, your camera is here. Yes, Nangami Masaka on, on 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 social media platforms. I'm not on X. I think that's the only platform I'm not Why on not X on and X Snapchat. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, it just never worked with me from the beginning. It's a space that I just never blended in. Uh, I, I don't know why. But it's so engaging. I it is, it, it is. Yeah. I, I've heard that so many times that people tell me to get on there, but perhaps maybe I'm still a coward. Yeah. Um, it's it's, it's very compative. The X is <laughs> it's incredibly compative and uh, I really yeah. like to take care of my of my peace. Um, so I'll go where peace oh, is. Oh, you prefer? All right, yes. Um, and, 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 and you know when you're good at what you do, people will, go, will come and look for you wherever you are. So yeah, you told exactly. me about the punchline. I will leave um, people with this scripture. Um, I've forgotten the book specifically, but it says, um, Arise and shine for your time has come. Right. Arise for the glory of God is upon you. And then it goes on to say that nations will come to your light and kings will be drawn to your rising. So for me, I know that um, if I'm good at what I do, nations will come to my light, kings will come to my, um, will be drawn to my rising. They will come where I am. I'm right. so good at what I do, they will seek me out. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So we must <laughs> social media, Nigan. Nangami Masaha. Nangami uh, Facebook, masaha. TikTok, Instagram. I'm quite new. I don't have, um, anyway, I don't have to defend myself. Nangami Masaha, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, please don't let that voice <laughs> die. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. I think we can talk all day from sure. sunup to sundown. Right. Now that you're a public speaker. Yes. Thank you so much for coming through and we appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me.
All right. And at this point, we take a break. Uh, we have been speaking to Nangami Masaha. Definitely, you've gotten a lot from this conversation. And I'd like to hear your feedback on it on that hashtag, which is why in the morning at Brian Sanko 101. We take a break. We come back with much more. Stick around. <laughs>